Here we have some of the ingenious experiments that formed part of Harry Harlow's annual address to the American Psychological Association in 1958. In one swipe they proved the founding principle of attachment theory to be correct and the tenets of behaviorism to be false. Although attachment theory had 15 years or so of evidence-based research at this point, its findings were trivialized by rivals with vested interest, especially psychiatrists who were and are predominantly behaviorists, yet these experiments settled the argument. From this point on, attachment theory became irrefutable. Now here are 106's two mothers. As you can see, it was weaned on a wire mother. Here's baby 106. Watch. He's going to the wire mother. He's got to eat to live. going back. He's back on the cloth mother and he'll stay on the cloth mother. Actually this baby spends from 17 to 18 hours a day on the cloth mother and less than one hour a day on the wire mother. We had predicted that the variable of contact comfort would be a variable of measurable importance but we were unprepared to find that it completely overwhelmed and overshadowed all other variables, including those of nursing. Okay, so what this proved is that a monkey which was raised on a wire mother without any prior contact comfort is instinctively motivated, or genetically driven, to seek contact comfort when it's available. Thus, behaviorism's tenant that there are no behaviors present at birth was proved false. Yet behaviorism also taught that a baby's attachment to its mother was because it associated her with feeding, and that's why their bond grew. So this experiment also proved that behaviorism's ideological perspective for interpreting behavior solely based on conditioning by association was deeply flawed. We now know that contact comfort releases potent anti-stress hormones which promote bonding and learning. Frankly, doctor, if it comes to a choice between wire and cloth, it's reasonable to expect that any child will go to the cloth. It's a matter of creature comfort, like a baby with its blanket. But is this really love? Well, what do you mean by saying that a baby loves its mother? Certainly one thing we mean is that it gets a great feeling of security in the presence of the mother. Now, Mr. Collingwood, wouldn't you say that if you frightened a baby, that it went running to its mother, was comforted, and then all the fear disappeared and was replaced by a complete sense of security that that baby loved its mother? Now, in this experiment, this is the apparatus we use. That looks diabolical. That's just the way the baby monkey feels about it. Flashing eyes, loud sounds, moving mechanical parts, all of these things are designed to frighten a monkey. Now here we have a peaceful, resting baby monkey. Let's find out what his reactions to his mother are when we frightened him. He's scared, all right, and he does what any child will do in a similar situation. He runs away. It's more than running away. He was running to his mother to touch her, to drive away his fear. Contact with the mother changes his entire personality. Look, now he's actually threatening the diabolical object. 
A baby or toddler's instinctive reaction when distressed is to seek contact with its mother. The fear causes stress hormones such as cortisol to rapidly rise and the contact comfort releases anti-stress hormones such as oxytocin which rapidly counter those effects by calming. It's difficult to overstate how important this contact comfort is for babies and toddlers in those moments when they're distressed. If no contact comfort is received at those times, those children are left to stew in a cocktail of high stress hormones and neurotransmitters. Their emotional development is severely arrested and too is their ability to interact with and learn from the environment. Contact comfort provides the basis for developing a secure personality. This gives us part of the picture of the strength of infantile love. This is a six foot square room with a few toys and other objects. But to the monkey, it's much more menacing. We know that when our own children are taken to a strange place without their mothers, they are often overwhelmed with fear. This room is just such a new and strange environment for the baby monkeys. No mother is in there. Now, let's put a monkey into the room. Notice how cautiously he enters the room. He's searching for comfort, but nothing relieves his disturbance. Now we'll take the baby monkey out and put in a wire mother. Now this one was nursed by a wire mother. That's right, all his life. She doesn't seem to help much. Now we'll try the same test with a cloth mother in the room. You see the contrast in the behavior? Despite the fact that the wire mother nursed him, she could offer this infant nothing in the way of affection or security. But here the monkey, by rubbing against the cloth mother, as if he were seeking as much contact comfort as he could get, builds up his reservoir of affection and security. First, his body relaxes as the fear disappears. But above and beyond this, new positive response patterns appear. He now goes out to explore and investigate this new strange world. He is now a normal, happy, curious baby. Not only did Harlow's experiments empirically prove how important contact comfort is for healthy psychological and emotional maturity, but the raft of his experiments also proved how deeply devastating the effects of not receiving contact comfort is for personality development. Those monkeys who only had a wire mother became socially retarded and broken to the point that they could not interact normally with other monkeys when allowed to socialize. Indeed, we now have the 30-year findings of the Minnesota Longitudinal Study into Parent-Child Interactions, which tracked children from birth who had this principle of contact comfort, either neglected or abused, and those individuals develop behaviours and personality traits which are found throughout the DSM disorders. A few examples of distinct pathways of development were those who were neglected contact comfort all the time manifested conduct disorders and were prone to abusing drugs and alcohol. Those who received it only sometimes manifested anxiety disorders and those who actually became fearful of their mothers manifested dissociative personality traits. 
It's contact comfort that allows a child to become calm and bond with his mother so that together they can make the most out of the face-to-face -face interactions which guide the child's emotional development.